all, biology is a sloppy system. There's receptor tyrosine kinases that activate kinases that activate kinases that activate kinases. That activate kinases. It's this stupidly complicated process, and there's never really been a great explanation for why biology is such a big, sloppy process. But it's interesting to think about all of this going on in all of our cells all the time. Um, on the first day of class, I talked about how all cells come from other cells, and that means that every single cell that is alive today is a machine that has been working nonstop for four billion years. Um, they our cells have obviously diversified a lot in those four billion years, um, but considering how sloppy biology is, it's even more amazing that these cells have kept working for four billion years. Of course, a lot have died, and we don't see them around anymore. Um, one other big thing that I wanted to, especially in this last unit, think about is that interpretations change and debate is one of the things that drives science. So whether it's the alpha or the beta gamma subunits that bind is interesting. How noggin works is interesting. But to me, the, fact, the, the ways we discover these things are quite amazing to learn about. And sort of along those lines, any particular experiment is going to have some limitations to it. <coughs> But data really lasts forever. And so if I go into the lab and get a frog with two notochords, it will still get two heads today, just as well as it did in 1929. <coughs> if I do some sloppy purification of alpha subunits, I can still get current through potassium channels, just like Lutz Blumbrommer did in 1988. Um, and so the solutions to the debates in science come from new data and not just from complaints about limitations of existing research.